The Spirituality Now podcast is sponsored by Delaflor Teachings International, a spiritual and systemic coaching and consulting company with the mission to help individuals, businesses, and corporations create brilliant futures through sustainable transformation. Also sponsored by the Network for Human Empowerment, a philanthropic TV network that serves Spanish-speaking communities with free, conscious education aimed to empower individuals to become the best versions of themselves. And our podcast producer, Ascend Media, Authority Syndication, delivering premium video marketing, podcast production, and social syndication. Spirituality Now podcast, a podcast committed to supporting you in your journey to life mastery and personal enlightenment. Welcome to the Spirituality Now podcast. I am your host, Yvonne de la Flor, and I'm so excited because I have an incredible friend, ally, fellow member of a former mastermind or a mastermind that I was a former student of, a mastermind led by Kevin Nations, who, by the way, he was also in our podcast. He was a guest in our podcast, and I highly recommend you listen to his wisdom on faith, on sales, on finances. His mastermind operated under the premise of something called the four Fs, uh, where you bring harmony and you bring the best of yourself for everyone involved in your family, in your fitness, in your finances, and in your, I, I forgot one F, family, fitness, finances, oh, and faith, which is the most important. I think our podcast was named like that. Anywho, our guest today also recently had me as a guest in his podcast, The Million Dollar Relationship Podcast. Podcast, amazing interview he did. He has it on YouTube. I believe in iTunes. We'll ask him about it. And his name is Kevin Thompson. After selling 16.1 million of his own products and services solely through strategic partnerships, Kevin is intimately understanding of the value of relationships. As a host of the Million Dollar Relationships podcast and co-founder of the Tribe for Leaders community, he creates positive change on a global scale by facilitating new valuable relationships for eight-figure entrepreneurs and CEOs so they can make an even bigger impact in the world. He's been the conduit of trust for almost two decades of these incredible souls, and the introductions he's made have been worth millions. Because he's such a steward of relationships, Kevin is able to cut through all the red tape, eliminate rejection, and guarantee a red carpet reception for you. And here he is in our own Spirituality Now podcast, the one and only Kevin Thompson. Welcome, beloved friend. Well, thank you so much, Ivan. It is my pleasure, my honor to be here. That's so wonderful that you're here. And tell me something. Let's start with, I have a question. When, okay. when you were a child, how were you connected to the realm of relationships, which is literally, I believe, you know, this is Spirituality Now podcast, but we're a very practical podcast when it comes to spirituality. We're not a podcast where we're going to talk about, do you meditate and burn sage? No. How about, do you sell millions of dollars and help millions of people? Yes. I believe that all of that is spiritual. I believe that being who you are and doing what you love and helping people become better versions of themselves is one of the most spiritual endeavors that we can, you know, that we can endure in life and not only endure, but, but be stewards of to also be a true, truthful representatives of the great power, the great spirit, which I call God. So when does Kevin start developing this gift of relationships? And I want you to go back in time with me and go into your childhood and tell me a moment where you begin to realize that relationships really matter for life. So it's very interesting, Yvonne, that you asked this because I was uh, a guest on another podcast recently where the host asked me about this. And I, uh, we, we dug into this a little bit and it's interesting because I had not given it a whole lot of thought before. But when I was a kid, when I was very young, uh, in fact, where I, where I was born, uh, we lived in a very small community. 
And uh, so up until fourth grade, we, we moved from that town, but uh, up until fourth grade, I was, I the, the friends that I had, it was in a very small community. Uh, and so when growing up, everybody knew everybody. And, and so the friends I had, it was these really close relationships. And of course, you know, I don't know that as a child, you know, I, I, I didn't, I, I certainly don't think about relationships now the way I did back then. I didn't give it a whole lot of thought, but I just knew that like, these are my friends. And it was, I, I just enjoyed those relationships. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And, and I do know that, you know, in, when I was in fourth grade, uh, we ended up moving to another community because uh, my, my father worked in that town and he commuted to that town. And it, would, it, it was like an hour commute from where we used to live. And so we moved to save him on commute time every day, about two hours of drive time. And, and, and that's when my, re, my, my relationships changed when we made that move, for sure. That's so important because usually there is a point in our lives that something happens, whether good or bad, but there's always the element of change when our missions, when the purpose of what we are about, what we're going to be serving others into the future, right, for their own uh, personal success and fulfillment, that impacts us in a way that, you know, begin to build up this muscle of our mission stronger in ourselves. So I love that the change occurred uh, when you were moving. How how uh, how interesting. There's a move and there's a change. So what happened next? So how did your relationships began to change at that time? So what happened was I, I went from living in this community where we all knew each other and I had all my friends to now uh, in fourth grade, uh, now going into an environment where I did not know anybody, where people didn't know me, where I was the outsider who, who just wanted to fit in and, and, and make new friends. And it, it was a whole different experience. And I'll tell you, you know, that, that feeling of kind of like being this outsider, Ivan, uh, and, and trying to fit in and having to work to try to fit in and make friends and all that. It went on all the way until my 11th grade year. So from four to five to six, seven to eight to nine, to it went on for seven years. And, and at that time, a, a big shift happened. And what happened was my, my father actually got diagnosed with cancer at the beginning of my ninth grade year. Uh, and he passed away at the end of my 10th grade year. And there's, there's, uh, I, I will tell you, you know, as a young boy, he passed away when I was 16 years old, uh, to watch your father get sick and to deteriorate in health and to just, you know, be, become bedridden. And, and man, it was a lot. It was a lot. And I spent a lot of time with my father during the, that time that period. And, and when he finally did pass away, it was like a relief because I was like, man, he's finally out of his pain. And, uh, shortly after that, that summer between my 10th and 11th grade year, my mom was talking with uh, a neighbor and, uh, and I was, uh, I, I was my, my best friend, Scott was my neighbor. Uh, she was talking, my mom was talking with his mom who taught at this private school. And my mom came to the conclusion that she wanted to send me and my brother to this private school. And, and I wasn't that excited about it. I wasn't that excited about going to yet another school. Um, but she, mom was like, look, you guys try it out for one quarter. And if you absolutely hate it, then you can go back to public school. And I was like, OK, fair enough. And so we went to this, this private school. And when I went there, the first day, uh, what the, the big difference was is at public school, my graduating class, you know, at the time I would have been in 11, or, yeah, is that right? 11th grade, uh, was at public school, there was about 900 kids in my class. When I went to this private school, there was like 16 kids in my class. So it was a much smaller environment. Heck, the whole, the whole high school had like 80 kids in it and stuff. Wow, yes. It, and so because my best friend and his sister 
went to this school already. And then when I get there, I find out that there was two other friends of mine that I knew from church that they also went to this school. So because I had friends that were already there, they just start introducing me to the other kids right away. And, and because they introduced me to the other kids, I started making friends really quickly, really easily. And that next two years, those last two years of high school, was the most enjoyable experience ever. I created so many friends. I had such a great time and and just re and, and came Ivan to value relationships in a whole new way. And, and, and then, you know, now I can look back on this and really articulate it clearly where at the time, maybe not so much. I knew it was a great experience those last two years in school, but looking back on it now, I was like, wow, now I can really articulate it. I can see that for what it was. And I can also see those seven years from fourth grade up through 11th grade. It was kind of like this weird place for me. And now I have so much empathy for somebody who's in that place for themselves. And, and you know, entrepreneurs, especially the more successful entrepreneurs get, the more disconnected they feel in so many ways. And of course, I just have so much empathy for entrepreneurs who are that way and, and want to do whatever I can to help empower them, to help, help them create these meaningful, real, lasting and rewarding relationships in their life. And that's a big part of why I do what I do. Wow, love this so much. Love this, how this all ties with the incredible work you are doing, how you connect people, how you build networks of not only for businesses, but of I love what you just said of genuine, real friendships. And I love that you said that you started creating friendships. And I want everybody out there to pay attention to these words because a lot of people say, I don't have any friends, I feel alone. But I love the responsibility and the empowerment that contains the phrase that you just said, I created friendships. Tell us a little bit about, and now let's, let's jump back in time. Let's come into, you know, early future when you start actually doing this business of building networks, putting people together for them to make business, but most important to make genuine relationships. What is it that that you see that is um, like a couple, I don't know if there are steps, but what do you notice that you could do to create those relationships that last for, you know, a, a lifetime? Yeah. So let me ask you, just for a little bit of clarification before I just start continuing on, are we, are we talking about business relationships? Are we talking about personal relationships? Kind of a combination of both? Where would you like? I think, to I think let's go, let's go in combination because you actually do that for friendships that are no business and for friendships that are business wise, right? I've noticed that you have that quality. Not everybody has it, right? That's why you can sell this as a business uh, to serve people, but it's, it's a common so why is it important to create relationships? Let me reframe the question. Why is it important to create relationships instead of being in the, you know, in the victim mentality that I don't have friends? And why is it important to build these relationships, not only for business, but in your personal life as well? Relationships are the most valuable asset we possess. And especially when, if, if we're an entrepreneur, it is doubly, quadruply true. Oh. And, and I'll tell you, you know, the, the thing is, is we never know where somebody is, you know, and I, and I never, uh, what's the right word I'm looking for? Distinct, you know, I don't look at somebody like, you know, somebody runs a, a company doing 200 million a year or somebody is a, is a, a waitress at a restaurant who is serving me a meal. And, and helping me create that experience. The, I, I don't place any distinction on them as, like, as one person has more value than another. Every one of us on the face of this earth is inherently valuable simply because we're here. Just because we are a living being on this world, we are valuable. <laughs> and you know, it, it took me a while to realize that for myself. And I think that's why 